Hi everyone, I'm Jay. I'm Colin. And this is Star Wars Conversations. Yeah. So, Colin, less than a week to uh, the Last Jedi. I know it's uh, it's a big week next week. It's it been, we've had a week off um, mm-hmm. after our amazing fiftieth uh, episode. <laughs> um, that took a lot of effort and time and uh, knackered me. So it almost broke me actually. So uh, we're back now after I, a week uh, off. <laughs> yeah, I, I rewatched the drunk one. I was like, oh man, I must I must stop getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched some of it, but uh, I I couldn't watch it all. <laughs> it is cringy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So apologies for uh, Star Wars Conversations fans. <laughs> but normal service has been resumed. <laughs> Do you think we lost fans or gained fans on that one? <laughs> um, I think people generally didn't watch it, so oh, okay, <laughs> it doesn't <cool>. really matter. <laughs> we had about four people watch it. Oh, right, right, that's all right. Uh, so that's good. So, um, someone did say that was their favourite episode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Us uncensored. Yes. More, more exactly. like Freddy. <laughs> Booga with the Luger turned a man into spaghetti. <laughs> I think the Jag MC used to say. Um, anyway, stop talking about my musical roots. Yeah. <laughs> being so cool and hip. Um, <laughs> And let's get on to Star Wars. Yeah, so next week is a massive week. We've yes. got lovely uh, the, the Last Jedi. We've also got the Last Jedi download for the uh, Battlefront 2. Yes, you're very uh, excited about that. I'm excited about as well. So that's uh, it's a big week. Big. I've got two days booked off. Yeah, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Unfortunately, half of that will not be <laughs> playing the game or yeah, watching the films. Hopefully you'll be awake <laughs> to watch the movie. Yeah, I've got a little op, so uh, that will have a sedation just before I've got to go see the midnight show in, so that'll be interesting. So lots of coffee as soon as I get back out of that, so that'll be <laughs> fun times. It'll be uh, like a dream for you. i tell you what, it's a bloody good job I've got um, got the tickets for the next day, <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I can say, because... It might be a bit hazy otherwise. <laughs> yeah. But you guys will find out because we are going to record reaction videos straight off, aren't we? Yeah, we'll do our reactions just like we are did. Are we going to put them one. straight um, Facebook Live them? And um, YouTube Live them? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. But I'm going to. That's the easiest way of doing it. Facebook. YouTube them. YouTube, YouTube Live. Live. Okay, cool. Because yeah. you can connect that to Facebook anyway, doesn't it? Does it? Does it? I don't know, man. I, I, I have no idea. What did, not... do? what did we do on the podcast? We did both, right? But yeah. we use two different devices, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but man, I think... I, I'm excited, man. I'm really excited, especially for the movie. I mean, I, I mean, it, it wasn't long ago that we were like, ah, oh, 40 days until the Last Jedi, and now it's like, oh yeah, it's next Thursday. That's well, just crazy. Yeah. But it's more like next Wednesday to us, isn't it? Since we're well, seeing it's, it, it's Wednesday night. night. Yeah, Wednesday night. Thursday morning. So how yeah. many sleeps is it? It's what day does it say? So it's Friday. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Five sleeps. Five sleeps. Five sleeps till the last Jedi. So is there anything that you really, really hope that you see in this movie? Like we I I've been avoiding things. So on the group I post articles and stuff. But, you post a lot of articles. But I, I post them like in case people want to read them. But really, in the past few weeks, I've not been reading them myself. I've been avoiding mm. stuff. I watched um, the live panel that they did with Anthony Bresnikan, um, with the whole cast and Ryan Johnson. I watched the Jimmy Kimmel um, uh, one where he had the cast and Ryan Johnson. Um, but that's really about it. I'm avoiding everything now. I mean, of course we know like some of the planets Canto by and Crate and things like that. And we know like there's characters like Rose and DJ, but I know nothing about them. And I'm actually really happy about this. Like I'm going to go into this movie and I, I will know pretty much nothing. Yeah. Like, I've avoided, I've avoided a lot of things. Um, the only thing I've watched was the Star Wars show. Cause obviously I have to watch that. Mm. Yeah, of course you do. The well, lovely Andy. Yes, she'd be very upset if you didn't watch. Yeah, mm. uh, but um, but that didn't tell you anything anyway. That 
that had the most we you know had the big lineup this week about how it's got interviews of all the stars, yeah. which it did for about a second each, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it had a longer section on droid making sponsored by Walmart or something. <laughs> <laughs> so. They've got. There's been a few things with the new BB droid. They're calling him BB Hates, but he always he like BB Nine E or something like that, isn't it? I don't know. I don't um, know it's called. Something yeah, the like only that. thing I have seen, which was I don't know what to talk about because I don't want to spoil it for you if I if I tell you, it was a shot from one of the TV spots that I saw yesterday. Oh yeah, a new one came out with some spoilers in it apparently. Well, well this might be the one now. Oh. <laughs> It's, it's got. It's to do with Ray. Yeah, with Ray and Snoke. Yeah. Yes, yeah, to do with that scene, right? That, that they showed on the other one. Yeah, I, I haven't watched that. Do you want me to say? You don't want to say it? No, nah, I don't want you to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say it then. I, I actually saw because on the um, the article for that TV spot, it says um, spoiler regarding that scene and it's got the picture of Ray like held with the force and I thought no nah, I'm not watching it don't watch it I'm not don't watch it. watch it dude I'm gonna just go in there because I, I mean last time with uh, The Force Awakens you know I went on Slash Film and I looked at the pictures of Kylo Ren's helmet and you know all, all those kinds of things that weren't released you know beforehand so the big difference for me uh, between now and what happened in The Force Awakens got leading up to it was because The Force Awakens, we didn't know any of the characters. Yeah. And you know my amazing memory. I <laughs> couldn't remember any of their names for, until at least about the third time I saw, saw the film. Oh, right. <laughs> I just couldn't, I, you know. So I had no idea who was who or anything. Right. So going, but this one, because obviously we know the characters, it's so much easier to pick up on things. Yeah. Like The Force Awakens, it was just like, Ooh, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. and it's just a blur of Star Warsy things that you just didn't, you couldn't really tell what it was. Yeah. Whereas with this one, everything you've seen, you know what it is. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you know the thing. I mean, with the Force Awakens, we hadn't had Star Wars for ages, so you know you were looking at all this cool stuff, as you say. But but now it would be just piece things together. Then it would be then because there was nothing to piece together. We had no idea what was coming. Yeah, nothing. Who no. was Ray? Yeah. Who was Finn. You know? Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, is there anything in particular you'd really like to see happen in this movie? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, I'd like to see Luke beat Leia. So you'd like to see Luke what? Beat Leia. Beat see Leia. Her. Meet her. Not meet her. <laughs> meet her. <laughs> I was like, yeah. like why? Why do you want to see that? Not beat her. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I was no. going to beat Leia. Why, man? Like, what's well, wrong with you? <laughs> uh, I'd also like to see Leia... Use the force. That would be cool. Some kind of Jedi ness. Like, like actually quite a bit stronger than anything we've seen before. Yeah. yeah. I want to see her turn into a luminous being. <laughs> Not this crude matter. Yeah. Um, and I would like to see uh, what's under Snoke's robe. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, now people can't see Colin. But right now, he's dressed <laughs> kind of like Snoke, and uh, I'm hoping that what's under Snoke's robe isn't what looks like underneath Colin's robe. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I guess I guess the big thing we want to see, tick off things yeah. are, find out who Ray's parents are. I think know. we're going to. I don't know this. They keep saying it's not a big deal. No, I don't think it will be. I, don't, I think that'd be a non, non. Oh, I definitely know it's not um, Ido Verse and, and Matey Boy from Battlefront 2. Uh, you, you know it's definitely not? Yeah, because in the advert for the download, you see Ido Verse's daughter. Ah. ah. <laughs> well, well, I'm assuming it's her daughter. Well, right? Let's be honest, that would have been a really <laughs> crap way to do her parents because the general public who don't play the game would have no idea what the hell's going on. Well, I wouldn't care, because I would. So yeah, I but, think it would have been brilliant. But they make the movie for the general public, not for... No. <laughs> no. Kathy doesn't. Oh, is that what she told you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Kathy and Helena... Oh, should I tell you what? Go on. You're going to get well annoyed. Why? I'm, I'm well annoyed. 
Oh. Where my wife works, which obviously I won't say, mm. the whole Lucasfilm story team were there having no. dinner. Yeah. What? When? <laughs> Last night. What? I know. Oh my god. How come? I don't know. Lu- Lucasfilm had hired it and having some kind of meal thing. And your wife didn't phone you and go, get your ass down she, there. No, you? she told me afterwards. Oh, what? I know. How oh, nice. Are you guys still happily married? Well, <laughs> I've been, but I don't know exactly who from Lucasfilm was there. I said, well, bloody Kathy was probably there. She was waiting for the me. The fact that it was people from Lucasfilm. I know. Being good enough for but this is the thing. There, right? Well, the thing is, because I'm allowed to go, I'm not going to say what, what, where she works or what she does. Yeah. But <laughs> obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the, the place I can go to and use it. Yeah. Um, when, if I'm with her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we've been talking about me going there for something to eat soon. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh, but she knew. I mean, I, to be honest, I wouldn't be out. The thing is, there's a law. She obviously can't talk to people, you know, and be like a fanboy to yeah, of course. who are there. And so this is going to be, this is brilliant <laughs> for people listening. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Speaking in code. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I'd have gone, I wouldn't be able to not talk to her. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's probably for the best that I didn't know because it would have just completely made me go crazy at me. And I like to think that if you did turn up, you'd be wearing your Jedi robe that you have on Yeah, now. I would be. I would, see, I would have been wearing Star Wars stuff. <laughs> or a cardboard costume. Yeah, or something. <laughs> because the thing is, because there's, cause, cause there's quite a few famos that go to that place where, right. where she works. Yeah. And like, like from Doctor Who, from all different things. And so, like again... I just wouldn't be able to control myself. You know, you know <laughs> what so, I've done? What? I've got, I've got a t-shirt and it's just got Lu- the Lucasfilm logo across the front. You I'd just you worn that <laughs> and be like, yeah, now I'm with these guys. <laughs> so I'm just a bit late <laughs> and get a table. <laughs> Sit down there though. Hey man, who are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm Jay. I work, I'm a grip. <laughs> so I reckon it. So I reckon they must be down for like the premieres and stuff. Is there a London premiere or yeah, something? Yeah, there will be. Yeah, there'll be probably. It's probably happening this weekend, I guess. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you know what, it must be because, well, I guess I didn't win, but I entered the competition to win two tickets to it. <laughs> I didn't win it. <laughs> what I... the hell, man? <laughs> um, uh... Yeah, imagine if Mark Hamill be there. I'm... See, this is the thing. Uh... If, if I knew that, it would drive me crazy. So I, uh, Hopefully she won't tell me ever, because it would make me mad. It made me feel worse knowing that they there, and I can't speak to them. Then not knowing they were there. Well, what, imagine if, like, one day, like, her phone rings and you you pick up the phone, you know, because it's someone you know, or whatever. And uh, it just so happens that the last thing she was looking at was her photo gallery. When you hang up, it goes to the photo gallery, and you see a picture of her with like Mark <laughs> Hamill. <in. laughs> that would be cool, but again, completely not allowed. <laughs> So anyway, let's move on from that. Yeah, um, well, sorry, I digress it, massively. There, yeah, sorry. Other things you'd like to see happen. Though. Um. So we, do, we, we I want to know who Snoke is, but I don't think we're going to find that out. Are I don't we? think we're going to know. Um, I want to see Kylo join the Resistance. Right. Or at least have a truce with Ray. Okay. I think that's most likely to happen. Uh, I want to see Luke use the Force massively. There's got to be. Oh, we've got to see a Snoke that. versus Luke battle, haven't we? But that might be in episode 9. Well, why not do it now? Well, it, it could happen, but I reckon it'll be in episode 9, if anything. I don't know. Although, actually, just... no, no, you're right, actually. It could be in this one because. Episode 9 is going to really be focused on Ray more, right? Um, but you know what? So this evening, um, there was a programme on TV, and it was Jamie Oliver. So for people in the States, oh, yeah. he's like a, a TV chef no. kind of guy. Um, and Mark Hamill was his guest, <laughs> right? It's gonna it's on uh, Channel 4 Cash Up or whatever you can get it on there. Um, and, uh, you know, he was chatting to him and everything, and it was quite funny. And Mark Hamill was saying how part of the deal with him playing Luke Skywalker was that they said to him, look, if food tastes good, don't eat it. So he's got to lose weight, right? 
Um, and he did. He, he looks in much better shape now than he has in ages. And then he says, so at the end of The Force Awakens, he goes, they gave him these robes and they were huge. And he was like, I didn't need to even dye it. I could have just put them on. You know, <laughs> be um, but I was sitting there watching it and I was like, hey, yeah, I want to see Luke use the Force and use a lightsaber. I, I really want to see him do a somersault as well. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be brilliant I'm like I really want to see Luke old man Luke do a somersault or something see and I like, think and then get his lightsaber and then like just start hacking people up right I mean, I that'd be see, hilarious I want to see him and Snoke reenact Obi-Wan and Vader's fight from A New Hope <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well Snoke, Snoke's a cripple isn't he so he, Is he? he yeah yeah he's a cripple he's got like hands all like that and um, there was an interview with Andy Serkis where he was talking about playing him and he was saying how he's all crippled. So if you look yeah, at the pictures... Yeah, but Yoda's old git and then when he uses the force to yeah, make himself fight, doesn't he? Did you never see the pictures of um, the concept arts for Snoke where they were showing how his body's drawn? No. Ah. Well, he's, he's all twisted up, man. So I don't think he's going to be doing that stuff. I think he will. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to see... I, oh, like I, see Luke I know how it's going to end. Fighting. I know how it's going to end. Go on, the ski prediction then. Snoke <coughs> downloading into the new cloned body of the Emperor of Anakin. Of Anakin, oh. And it's going to be played by Hayden Christian. I'd like to see Hayden Christian turn up as a Force Ghost. So I don't think he's going to like. I want to see him as Snoke. I don't think that's going to happen. Why? I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. It's I just don't. Right but the other thing, I would like to see Ray turn to the dark side, which I also I, don't think will happen. But I would no, like to see it. I don't want her to go to the dark side. I, I just want her to go dark, but not go to the dark side. I, I don't want her to join Snoke or anything. I want her to turn to the dark side and then. I want her to use the dark side powers. Be walking a line where she has to come yeah. back, and then and then maybe like something to do with Kylo Ren brings her back, and that they have that thing that you were saying they balance out. Yeah, I I think she use dark side power, mm. but I don't think she would go to the dark side. I don't think she would get lost and then have to be brought back. Not in two films. But I, I don't I, think she will either. But I want her to. I want her to become a baddie. Unless that is how, because you know how Daisy was saying she wasn't going to be in the films. Afterwards. Yeah, but that... That's and she's also, gone back on it, hasn't she? Well, she said that when she signed up for it, she was told the story of Ray, and she saw it as being like a three-picture three thing. Minutes. And JJ also said that he just saw it as a three-picture thing. Right. So that's how she's looked at it. Um, I mean, look, Disney... Because if, if, Ray, Ray's a very popular character, right? And she's a very strong female lead and all that kind of stuff. So her merchandise, her in the movies makes them a lot of money. They're not going to want to let her go. It might be that they say, hey, okay, you know, go off, do whatever. We're going to do this other trilogy that's coming out. And then maybe in like so many years down the line, they might revisit the characters or something and then she'll come back. But, you know, they'll pay her a lot to do it anyway. So here's an in interesting thing, man. So do you think the financial commercial element would influence the story. So for in, so in my example on this being, Ray's really popular. Yeah. She could go real dark side, evil, stuff like that. Mm. But that might affect toy sales, that kind of thing, and all the girls that love Ray. Well yeah, that's the problem. So isn't it? do you think it the film Disney would ever get to a stage where they would put the commercialism before the yeah. story, or do you think they they no, would? It, it's a business. It's all about making money, and and actually, I do think that they might um, be concerned that the the little girls who, um, I mean, raise like a role model character, right? So that would be That's what I'm the, saying. you've got this great strong female character. That's why. So, like, I think that she could turn to the dark side, and then her goodness brings her back and that would happen during the course of a movie. I don't think they'd leave her dark. I think she could go dark for a bit and come back. I know what would bring her back. I don't think they'd leave her there. I know what would bring her back. Speak. Finn. Finn. Yeah? Just because like, I, just like Lois know, Lane. 
you know, I've always maintained that there's going to be this relationship between Ray and Kylo, and now you're going to bring the balance to the yeah. thoughts. Mm -hmm. I've revised that a bit in that I think definitely she's going to be swayed to be and almost, uh, what's the word, um, seduced by uh, Kylo mm. in some respect and mm. want to be with him. And But I think her journey will be it would be Finn that brings her back and stops her from going down that dark path yeah I think that Finn relationship wise he'll have a relationship with Rose so I don't think he'll end up I don't Ray. think he will you don't no I think that's I think they're going to be little friends but I don't think they because basically you know like in the clip I I'm, I'm, must have seen the clip when he comes straight out of the hibernation thing or Mm. And the first, you know, Poe's going, you know, there must be a million things you want to see or whatever, and he goes, no, Ray, you know. Yeah. yeah. And and I think he is going to be driven to get to Ray, and, and that's think how I think. Have, uh, and that's how I think the film will end. I, I think that you know, he'll bring her back from going dark. I would be with, cool with that though. I like because yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it makes the character. Ray's character more interesting to have an arc yeah. where she gets because you know that that's been a thing that goes throughout Star Wars the whole way right there's the pull yeah. of the light in the dark so it would make her character more interesting to have that and actually go over the edge but to be one who can come back from the dark side mm. you know because we haven't really had that well I've, I, I still maintain she will end up being able to use both the dark and the light mm. side powers mm -hmm. Well, Luke at the is. same time, Luke could. yeah, yeah, exactly, and I think that's going to be the key thing. Now he's a great Jedi, and she'll become a great Jedi, mm. but she'll be more powerful and all this bollocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, right? Um, yeah, man. Uh, the, you know, it's it's funny because, and, and this is the thing with me going and not knowing anything. It's like it's great, like we can speculate. Also, I think we're going to go in there and be like, oh, none of that happened. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm well, really Ray's gonna, it's going to turn out Ray's real name's Jaina. Jaina. And her parents are Han and Leia. Yeah. Nah, they're not going to be Han and Leia. And, uh, and uh, Ben's real name is Jason. I would like that if she was Jaina, but I don't think that that would happen. I would love her. It won't happen. Never going to happen. So what do you want to see happen? Well, I just told you. I want to see Luke do a somersault. Yeah. I want to see... Um, uh, Ray go to the dark side and possibly come back from it. That would be mm. good. Um, I don't think that we're going to find out who Snoke is, but I would like to see a bit more about him and get an understanding of like how he seduced Kylo Ren. Do you uh, want to ben. see uh, Vader's castle? That's what I'd like to see. I, I would like to see it because they did say, I mean, after Rogue One, they did say that we would probably get the Knights of Ren. We want to see yeah. more of the Knights of Ren. That's what yeah, we want to see. I, I would like to see more about them, but I, I don't think we're going to, you know. No, I don't either. I, I think that's think. episode nine. Knights of Ren, episode nine. Well, yeah, depending on where Kylo ends up. Well, I, well, I think I honestly think Kylo's yeah. gonna, just going to go rogue. He's he's not, he's going to lose. He's not going to be part of the First Order. He's going to get away from... He's going to be his own man and he's going to have his Knights of Ren mm. and that's going to be the third act, I think, you know, in, 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 in the terms of the films. It's going to be him... Are the Knights of Ren even around anymore? Yeah, yeah. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? I know they are. Okay. They're on the fucking Vader's castle. That would be cool, right, if they were there. That's what they are. Just training and stuff. Yeah, being more that's powerful. what they're doing. Yeah. It's like, um, I don't know, a bit like, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what it's like. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, we've got five sleeps, we're going to have The Last Jedi, we'll do reaction videos, then we'll come together and we'll do one of these where we talk about the movie and what we thought, what we liked and what we didn't like and all that. We're not going to go through every bit of the film again now, are we? We did a two part of The Force Awakens. We might. Let's see how we feel after we've seen the movie. Was it Rogue One? I can't remember. I can't remember. No, Rogue well, One. We, might we weren't doing this. Movie. We might come out of the movie and be like, oh, that was so good. Let's just talk about the whole thing. Or we might be like, yeah, it was all right. Well, we won't I, I don't that. think that'll happen. <laughs> right, so anyway... We've got a section of the show. We have? What's it called? 
Colin's Comic Corner! <laughs> right, Colin's Comic Corner. Much, much overdue, Colin's Comic Corner. I'm telling you, Jay, I've got a lot of Star Wars comic in my pile. How much reading have you done? Well, I haven't read them all. This ah. is the issue. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot to... So, in my pile, to re... my two-read pile, including the ones I have just read, I had three issues of Mace Windy, four issues of Captain Phasma, five issues of Star Wars, four issues of Doctor Aphra, four issues of Poe Dameron, and four issues of Darth Vader. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> so... I have only managed to get through Captain Phasma. I've read all of that. Okay. And I've read um, the three issues of Star Wars, which takes me up to the end of Jason Allen's run, which is good. Ah, okay. So let's talk about Captain Phasma first. Okay. Firstly, what did you think of it all? Like, did you like this story overall? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. so, let me just tell you about it and all that stuff first. Okay. Right. It was written by uh, Kelly Thompson was the writer, Marco Shishetto was the artist, Andreas Mossa was the colorist. Um, and I tell you what, it was good. It was good. Um, the highlight was the art. The art was bloody fantastic Mm -hmm. and it's like um, it's almost like it's pencil coloured or war coloured so it's really nice and um, there's some I think um, because I I think I talked to you about the first issue a while ago because I had read it yeah you did and there was like a brilliant bit where Phasma jumped and her cape's very Batman that was the one where we found out about her getting out of the uh, trash trash compactor right Yeah. yeah so basically this this uh, four-story arc, um, this sorry, four-issue story miniseries. I think it was a miniseries. It's basically the story of um, Phasma escaping from the um, trash compactor, mm-hmm. um, but because she's the one that's um, lowered the base's defensive shields, she deletes all the records of her trans- transgressions, but she discovers that. Lieutenant Soul Weavers, Weavers had already, had already accessed, accessed the files, files and he escaped on a tight fi- on a tie fire. Tie- I can't speak a tie fighter. <laughs> right. Um, and so she basically managed to get away from um, the Star Killer base before it got blown up, and she made a pilot, uh, first order pilot TN three four six five, and the um, BB eight droid that was with her basically follow him, um, and then. The second issue is um, him landing on this planet because it turns out he's, he didn't have any fuel. Um, <laughs> and um, Convenient. Yeah, convenient. And, of course, they don't have any weapons because the title was being fixed that Phasma had uh, commandeered. Um, and I guess we the, this is where the story gets very close to the, the recent book. Mm-hmm. In the fact that um, <coughs> this the the theme across the book and the theme across this comic is Phasma is a survivor completely out for herself. Right. She's completely loyal to the First Order. Right. But she is a survivor first, and so it's all it's about her first. Her, her. She's yeah, nice. and so. Every choice she makes, and every choice she made in the book was about, for her, self, mm-hmm. completely selfish, ultimately. Mm-hmm. And in this comic, it's the same. So, and and to be honest, there wasn't much of a story in there. No. So basically, on Landry's planet, there's a, a, a group of settlers on the planet that are trying to make their way on the planet. There's mm-hmm. also indigenous um, species that are attacking them all the time. Um, the planet's quite harsh, which is similar to 
the planet that Phasma grew up in, lots of rocks and stuff. And so obviously Phasma could see, like, you know, there was definitely the AI uh, connection there. Mm-hmm. Um, they, her and the pilot go, because this lieutenant's been captured by these uh, indigenous aliens, um, like, that's a contradiction in phrases, but indig- the indigenous alien race that's on that planet, um, she she basically tries to join up with villagers and and convince them to help her. So basically, she's a she's a master in terms of commanding people and being a leader and right. motivating people, and that's her main skill set. It, throughout the book, she did that. Wh- whatever group she came across, she ended up taking command and leading them. That's what impressed Hux Hux Senior and things like that. Um, and in this, you know, she takes command of the village, <coughs> rallies them all together, gets them to do her bidding, but all for her own selfish reasons. She's telling them to help them uprise and get over things, but really it's just because she needs an army to get to this bloke mm. and their mm. cannon fodder and stuff like that. So it's just, it's a, it is a bit of a character study, but, I mean, you don't see her face or anything, even though obviously uh, she's just I taking... I was going to ask you, yeah. No, you don't see it. She puts on a different helmet for a little bit and stuff like that. What does that um, look like? And, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was just some crap helmet that she found. Oh. Um, so, and there's obviously the pilot that's working with her. And, you know, I won't spoil what happens, but you can probably guess. <laughs> we should I spoil it or not? Um, yeah, you might as well. I think these are these have all been out for a while, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. So basically, again, like the pilot, you get to know her. She's a female, this kind of thing. Ultimately, Phasma sacrifices her to to basically, you know. So no loose ends, basically. Yeah. BB-8 droid. The lieutenant gets killed. So her pi- she kills her pilot. So and, and going into the Last Jedi, no one knows what she did. Yeah, so basically, the end of the comic is her escaping from there. She's killed everyone, tied all the loose ends up, flies to the wherever the resistant, um, the first order are, and old Hux is going, "Oh yeah, brilliant! I knew you'd get away. You're the best." Right. And and so it's just <laughs> that's a really easy and convenient way for them when it gets to the movie for them to go, "Yeah, it's all fine." Yeah, I mean, and so again, this is just. Part of me thinks, did I need to read this comic? The answer is no. Right. 100% well, no if you've read the book, book. because... Well, obviously, this comic t- spells it out how how she got from A to B, right? Right, yeah. But in terms of the character <coughs> and, and knowing the character, it doesn't tell you any more than what the book did. Right. She's a ruthless son of a bitch. Mm. <laughs> and even though she's a mad woman. Um... And basically, she's out for herself and cutthroat. Um, I mean, it's worth it because the the, the actual art is amazing, so it's, it's really good to look at. The writing's good. I'm not saying I'm not slamming the writing here. The writing's mm. good, and I think Kelly Thompson's a good writer. But really, I it's just annoying because again, I think the whole story was tied. You know, it, was, yeah, it yeah. had no choice. It had to end up with her back on. the Dark of the base. Oh well, yeah, because we know we we knew from the Whoever trailers knows. that she's going to be in the next movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, she was going to get back. I mean, I, like, I still would have loved it. Trailers tell you that she escapes. Yeah, I mean, I still would have loved it if it had actually been the whole story had been set in her dying moment in her brain. Right. Yeah. She's been crushed by a trash compactor, but unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't happen. Um, Apparently, so, we're going to see quite a lot of her in the new movie. Maybe. Did, did I, the really comic and the book make you want to? No. Oh. This is the thing, I ain't bothered about Captain <laughs> Phasma at all. I, know. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I probably like her more than I did. Yeah. But but I, I think the issue is, in Force Awakens, her, I still don't think this the comic or the book justify i mean they all it seems to me they all to justify why she just gave up so easy to finn and han and mm. didn't fight mm. yeah which i guess this gives more well it doesn't give a reason but it says you know she's a survivor she does well, because she, when you watch, she's not lord to the first order when you watch the first uh, the first um movie you're like 
really? How like, rubbish. She, she just gave up, you know. Yeah. So, so, yeah, now that's a bit of damage control, isn't it? They're trying to fix that. Yeah. But, yeah. but really, it doesn't, to me, it still doesn't, I mean, I still don't see why she's like that. I mean, I get that she's a survivor, but it doesn't make the character any better. <laughs> no. It just it just explains it. Oh, she's yeah. a survivor. She unless, she isn't loyal. Unless something's going to happen in the next movie where she, um, you know, saves herself and gets away from first, or just starts becoming well, again, a bounty hunter or something. I, what I would have liked was something like, oh yeah, the only way she got away was by selling out the first or even more, and actually in full in the last year, she's actually a mole or something. You know what I mean? That would have mm. been more interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so really, it just basically all it's saying is the reason Phasma puts it out in the Force Awakens is because she basically doesn't care about First Order, really. Right. Um, and she doesn't mind lying or doing whatever. Great. So w- brilliant. Well done, Captain Phasma. Cool. So, so overall score out of ten. Uh, just just take the mini series on its own. Probably seven out of ten. Okay. It's art brilliant. Yeah. Story was okay. You know, it's enjoyable yeah. read. Well, it was fun score. to read. Yeah. Yeah, seven means it's good. Yeah, yeah it's good. Annoying. Now, I'm going to talk about Star Wars: The Main Comic now. Right. Firstly, does Yoda get hit with a rock? No. Is Luke reading a book? No. Okay. And are there um, stormtroopers with like uh, Hulkbuster armor? Yes. And, oh. Okay. So, right, Two so hours, start yeah, off with bad. issue 35 uh, by Jason Aaron and um, Salvador La Ed, Edgar Delgado is the colourist. So, um, this is probably one or two, the first story or two after um, the Screaming Citadel storyline that I told you all about. Okay, yeah. And this is a one and done. Basically, this is a Han Solo story. Okay. Uh, and it's quite good. Uh, again, the art is fantastic. Um, Salvador the Rock, basically, what he does is he finds a picture of somebody and he basically draws it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't knock it. It, it looks brilliant. Do you but have you any can, traces? You, but you can recognise all the photos and all the scenes that that face is from. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> but... But it still looks brilliant. So who cares? I don't care. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It looks excellent. Uh, I mean, it really does. I mean, the spot on Mon Mothna, Hansa, they, they are spot on. Right. Spot on. The only thing I think it does, though, is like when there's a character that isn't a main character... They look very different. They look more cartoony. Yeah. But not a lot, because he's but, got quite a realistic style. But hey, at least with him drawing them like that, when you see people like Luke, they look like Luke, unlike in the Battlefront 2 game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, like he draws ships brilliantly, it looks really good. So basically, this story is all about um, the Rebels have captured, um, earlier on in one of the earlier issues, uh, a hut called... Oh, Ger- Gracchus the Hut, right? Okay. Um, and he's the, what's different about him is he's got the you know those metal legs that um, Darth Maul uses. Yes, and he has his legs chopped off. Uh-huh. He's got legs tattooed. So it's a hut with legs. Yeah, he's got like spider legs. Wow, how does that look? So, look so, good? so he looks like a spider queen. I don't know if you can see it. No, you probably can't. Does it look good? Mm, not really. Oh. Well, yeah, it looks all right. Uh, can you see that? Ah, right, okay, yeah, yeah. That's quite cool, actually. I mean, at least he can move around properly. Yeah, because he looks like a spider queen lady. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, because he, it's all along his tail, kind of. And yeah, his front's raised up, and yeah, he yeah. looks like he's got red eyes or something there. Yeah, he's got reddish eyes. Um, so, basically, this is a one-and-done story. Han is being... It's, it's, all a, it's a character study on Han, basically. Right. Saying, um, why is he still there with the rebellion? Obviously, this is set between a new hope and Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't do it on the audio anyway. It's a man. Um, well, we can. 
Um, and so, obviously, Mon Moff, it starts off with him and Mon Moff having a chat, um, saying, Han, you're our only hope. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but you're our only hope. Uh, we need you to smuggle something for us. And basically, they need to get this hut that they've got captured to a more secure place because they don't want the people that want to kill the hut to come to back to where they their base is because they don't want to be discovered, that kind of thing. Even right. though I don't know why they're still on Yarvin. Because it looks like they're still on Yarvin anyway. Are they on Yarvin? Well, well, I mean, the Death Star was destroyed. Yeah, but that, surely the, the rest of the <laughs> Imperials know exactly where they are then. <laughs> no. Because, like, <laughs> you know, they were off doing something else and yeah. these guys had a medal ceremony in the party. Oh, yeah. So you know. <laughs> um, so basically, she wants Han to transport him to wherever. Um, so basically, the story is uh, that effectively, um, and he's got information they need to know. Um, there's a couple of fun moments with them. Um, it looks like um, Han's going to betray them because there's an Imperial. And and basically the the heart is in his ear trying to go. You know, you used to be really a you know smuggler dude. You mm. know, think you were really cool. If you let me go or surrender, you know, I'll I'll give you the money. It's that kind of stuff. You know, the only prison that you're in solo is the one you're in now. That kind of thing. Um, and so solo looks like he's going to surrender and hand them over, but really it's all a ploy. And it's a way to trick the information out of the hut. And uh, Han, you know, double twists everyone and it's super cool, basically. It's a, it's a, it's a fun comic. It's, it's a fun issue. If you're a fan of Han, it's really, it's cool. All right. Um, it's nothing, you know, it's not, again, it's not a game changer in the Star Wars universe. But it, for a Star Wars comic, it's a one and done and it's all right. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, that, so that's a good one. Um, the next issue. Now, I was worried here because this is actually finishing off a story that's been hanging for ages, which they seem to forget about. Which was the um, sorry, the I just skipped across. Uh, it was the I don't know if you remember, but C three PO had been captured by that Scar Squadron of Stormtroopers. Oh yeah, yeah. And how it was left was, obviously, the rest of the Rebellion gang had to leave him. Um, and, oh, and if no. You, oh, no. And if you remember, um, R2 stole a X-Wing and left Luke and flew oh. off to go and rescue him. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, obviously, I've been waiting for the end of his story for about six, you know, since the whole Yoda story, the streaming kit. I was like, when are they going to... Rescue three for the Yeah. So this story is R2. And first of all, it's still it's by the same team, so I don't need to say that again. Um, R2 goes to a Star Destroyer, gets on the Star Destroyer, wipes out a load of Stormtroopers, tricks a load of them. How does R2 res- rescues rescues C three PO? Signals the things. Uh. Escape Staff Bader in a TIE fighter and uh, him in an X-Wing. What? Uh, but... R2 doesn't have the force. But, but listen, you're pulling the faces and I would be pulling the faces too if you, if I just said all that to you. But actually the comment was really good. Really? It was really good. It was really but It good. sounds stupid. It sounds stupid, but actually the way they did it was pretty good. It wasn't two rebels. I mean, it, yes, it's a little bit far-fetched. Look, how does um and, and for someone like you who loves the empire yeah i guess you'll find it slightly annoying to ask who got the better of them but oh, they got the better of vader for but one. what what they what what jason allen did really well and this is why jason allen's a brilliant writer actually even though he's had a few dodgy stories was throughout the whole thing is Archie's doing all these unbelievable things there's a narrative all around which seems to be like from a manual saying about what an R2 droid can do and can't do and how you should keep it and how you shouldn't you should wipe its memory and how it's only limited to do this and at the same time it's a juxtaposition of what R2 is actually doing. It's quite clever. I okay. really liked it. 
I, I can see you would be very annoyed by it, but <laughs> I actually thought it was really well done. And it was it wasn't as preposterous. You know, the way they did it was R2 was literally uh, messing with the sensors and tricking them and stuff like that. And getting... Is that how he took out stormtroopers? Yeah, so basically what he did was he got... Well, first of all, he, you know his little electronic thing? Yeah. It, 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 there's a little line in how Chewbacca had upgraded it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was really sort of super strong. So the initial one, because he'd sort of... He played dead, played possum, and they pull, they pull him out of the X-Wing... And then he electrocutes the one that, that lets him, you know, that pulls him out. And then he manages to escape that bit, which right. is the, the, the probably the, the most, you know, could he have done that? But then he could, then he, because he's so inconspicuous, little droid, um, the other stormtroopers ignore him. He then gets into the ship's computer, and that's when he starts messing with everyone. So he, like, he, he signals different squadrons into different rooms turns all the lights off, makes it look like there's... And he makes it sound like that there's a killer droid in there. Right. And uh, and so the, and, and end up the stormtroopers wipe each other out, that kind of thing. And so how does he get away from Vader? So this Vader is... Yeah. Just so, his ass. so this was when I was starting to think, whoa. Uh, but basically, also R2 frames someone as well. It sets someone else up. <laughs> right, all right. Which is quite good. Um, yeah, he's a son of a bitch. So basically, R2 escapes with... Uh, and it's also quite funny because like, all through it, C-3PO, he's like, oh, I guess I'll fly the X-Wing. But you know it's R2 fly. It's it's quite it's it's done really well in character. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they escape. Vader turns up and goes, you know, and he throttles the bloke that's let, let, let R2 escape. And um, he goes, I'll bring him down myself. And uh, he's following R2, and and Fupia goes, oh, Vader, Vader's chasing us. Um, and then Vader's going, I sense no life aboard that ship. It's a droid pilot, a skilled one. He will learn mm. well. Oh, and also Vader definitely wanted to see Fupia destroyed. He put uh, a personal right. order to have him destroyed, so he obviously remembered him. <laughs> um, I made a gay droid. And to be honest, really... <laughs> He was just about to, j- to jump to light speed when when he turns around, and the reason he gets away is because that is literally when Han, Luke, and everyone else and all the Rebel Alliance turn up. Right. So, so they then they all jump to hyperspace. Um, so look, it, that I can see it being mega annoying. I really enjoyed it. Okay. And then the last issue <coughs> of the no, still by the same team. And this is basically this um, Scar Squadron, and it's basically uh, starts off with uh, Vader train well, letting that, that the stormtrooper who has all the lightsabers, uh, Vader's watching him try and train with with those sort of flying things, and he basically says to him, "Look, uh, too much, too much a stormtrooper. Try your mind, Sergeant Creel." You would never be a Sith. And then he's saying, I'm not asking to be. I'm a 501st. Um, but I just appreciate the value of a good lightsaber. And then Vader's going on at him saying, look, you haven't earned this. Still, uh, um, tell me why I should give you a chance to redeem yourself in a squadron. And so basically Vader sends him and his squadron to go and track down something. What's he going to track down? He's got to go and find Sky- Skywalker. <coughs> okay. Um, and they go to a planet, and they have a fight, and they go to another... Basically, it's them going to lots of different places, hunting people down, being bad asses. Um, Scar Squadron. Uh, and that's it, really. And it's a bit of a weird story. Not really much happens. Um it's basically because it's Jason Aaron's last issue, it's almost like him saying goodbye and it basically ends with I think now the Scar Squadron basically wipe out a load of rebels and leave a horrible message for Luke. Right. Right. Um and then basically that's the end of it. So it's a bit bit of a, and then there's a short story 
about Sam people and, and um, Obi Wan, one of his Obi Wan Journal of Obi Wan stories. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is the art is by Andrea Sorrentino, right? And he, I don't know if you know his work. He did, um, <clears throat> he did. I first knew him from the Green Arrow comic, and then he did some Hawkeye, I think, and then he did, um, he did the Secret Empire. Ah, okay. Really? Did you do the, um, that Hawkeye comic that they brought out? They all had white covers. Um, and I think really, so. No, really no, detailed no. Art. You no. know what ones I mean? Uh, I think, I don't know how many issues of it he did. Um, he also did um, The Eye Vampire for DC. That's when I first saw his work. Ah, okay. um, but really brilliant artist, really good. Um, and also it's, it's part of it by Dash Aaron. I don't know who Dash Aaron is. Obviously something to do with Jason Aaron. And, yeah, that story's all right. It's just a backup story. Um, and that was Jason Aaron's one. Very good. Cool. Um, I have also started to read the first issue of, of Kieran Gillen's run. And I'm not sure about it yet, so I will finish that before I give you any more. And that'll do for my comic review today. Cool. Cool. And and that was a good review, Colin. It was good Thank to you. hear. Uh, it's been a while since we've had... Um, Collins Comic Corner. And on that note, I think we should uh, close up this uh, episode 50 minutes in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that... Not again. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be shorty. It, it was for a while. Um, can um, I just talk about Battlefront 2 for a little bit more? Uh, sure, why not? I love it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's Colin's thoughts on Battlefront I've been again. really enjoying oh. playing it, but I don't have yeah. enough time to play it. I'm excited about the new game. I like the the. Have you seen the trailer yet for the for the download? You know what? While we were talking, it came on TV in front of me. Oh, it's so cool! It, it looked pretty good. It looks really good. The um, walkers look excellent. I can't yeah. wait to they, they play. They do. They do you know? look good. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's three maps. There's a map. Obviously, I think there's the battle map. And there's a map. I think going in underneath Crayer, and I think there's a there's going to be a space battle map as well. Right. So awesome. Cool. Yeah, I, I'll look forward to the space battle one for sure. Mm. Um, oh, right. yeah, maybe some of the other. Enough of that. Okay, cool. Well, let's wrap it up then. So um, that's it for this week. Uh, you can find us in all the usual places on the internet. Um, the group where it all started on Facebook, which is Star Wars Conversations. You can find us on Twitter. You can find me. And Colin, you can find Colin at Captain Colin. And you can find me at Eagle Eye nineteen thirty three. Um, we're in all the places where you can find podcasts, including um, Stitcher, SoundCloud, um, iTunes, and anywhere else. Just yeah. look for Star Wars Convo or hashtag Star Wars Convo. Um, same, same for uh, Twitter. You can use at Star Wars Convo or hashtag Star Wars Convo. Um, and the other place we are is on the Taylor Network of Podcasts, the place that Colin's going to tell you all about. Oh, yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> it's a place where there's millions of podcasts all on one feed. Uh, it's called Taylor Is Us. Taylor Is Us. Um, it's not. It's called Taylor Network Podcast. Uh, <laughs> but there's some great ones on there. Nothing's on uh, for all your TV and films and stuff. Um, go trek yourself. I currently um, in the Discovery hiatus, um, having lots of interviews with different people from the world of Star Trek. They've had a couple of authors and editor of IDW Star Wars comic, uh, Star Trek comics. That's been interesting. Uh, no apologies. Uh, gotten by Geek. Oh, it's great uh, interview with Tom King, uh, the writer of Batman at the moment. Uh, he was on um, answering questions from listeners. Cool. Um, yeah, loads of great podcasts on there. Make sure you listen to them. Awesome. Um, and so that's it then right yeah man that's it all so that'll do it for us this week Um, until next time punch it Chewie may the force be with you we'll see you after the last Jedi